I love playing Ravel. Who doesn't love playing Ravel? It's like going to the best French restaurant and then graders for dessert, but then not being full. And you can go back to the great French restaurant and then to graders over and over again. And it, it's this delicious meal of music. And it's so tastefully prepared. The orchestrations are superb. My favorite movement is the Beauty and the Beast. Nothing to do with Disney, no, no. It's long before that. But what's incredible is that you have a duet between contrabassoon and the clarinet. What's the contrabassoon? You take a bassoon and you add a couple uh, feet to it. You wrap it around like a big pretzel. It actually looks like a paperclip. It sounds beautiful when played by the right people. And it makes this low, rumbling voice. I love playing this movement because I have this duet. Beauty is, is me. And the beast is a contrabassoon. And we have this little dance throughout this movement. It's incredibly sweet and fun to play. Radu Lupu is, is playing the concerto. And, and uh, it is, for me, just always an, a special event when Radu is with us and when I have an opportunity to to perform with him, Radu is known as one of the greatest pianists alive today. He's known for his classical and romantic repertoire, Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, and so on. Bartok, which of course one should associate with him because of his, his Romanian, Hungarian and Romanian cultures are, are uh, extremely close, one doesn't really associate uh, Radu with this music, and I think that it is um, a real treat to have a kind of authentic understanding of that music, and of course, a giant musical giant like Radu uh, accompany us, or we are accompanying him in this case. We take a piece by Bach. Um, it's a Richard Carr from musical offering as seen through the eyes of Anton Weber. Anton Weber sort of deconstructs, takes this piece by Bach and breaks it into a small pieces, and then tries to glue it back together, but in the way that he sees fit. So while all the notes are exactly the same, the, the choices of instruments and the combinations of instruments. That are the choices of Anton Webern. So this is an interesting, short and interesting um, sort of an appetizer, if you will, for the for the program or the piece that comes next. Lutoslavsky, one of the giants of, of the 20th century, without any doubt. And um, one of the best recordings that I think we have made with Cincinnati Symphony is that Lutoslavsky concerto for orchestra along with the Bartok. Um, I feel that the music is, is extremely fresh and extremely um, confident in what it says. At the same time, it is quite closely connected to the past. It is not something that feels that it is so far ahead of its time that it's hard to hard to connect with it. Lutoslavsky, even though he claims that he never heard the Bartok concerto for orchestra, it's hard for me to believe that that's the case because there are so many parallels and there are so many similarities. I find them equally great. I find that Lutoslavsky, in one way, perhaps is more concerned with, with the sort of sound and color aspects than Bartok. But the final effect is just as as powerful and virtuoso as, as Bartok.